Hello, everyone. I'm Zeman. And uh, let's start from background. As we know, um, AI is changing the world, uh, making things smarter and uh, more efficient. But for AI to work well, we need a reliable and a strong infrastructure. That's where Kubernetes comes in. Kubernetes has become the top choice uh, for running large machine learning tasks. There are multiple reasons for this. First, Kubernetes simplifies scaling, manages the use of uh, different resources within the cluster, like uh, CPUs and AI chips. Kubernetes also has uh, built-in re resilience through Kubernetes controllers, which helps uh, manage the failures in large machine learning workload, and also security, compliance, etc. For all of them, Kubernetes aligns with the existing standards and governance, reducing the cost to build the new infrastructure specifically for machine learning, and speeds up the delivery. Most of the features are ready to use in Kubernetes for machine learning. However, um, when using custom AI chips, some adjustments are needed to integrate these devices uh, uh, effectively and efficiently. Today, we will focus on the observability of ML workloads in Kubernetes and how AI chips uh, fit into this framework. We've summarized the, the observability challenges of running machine learning workloads in Kubernetes with AI chips into two main classes. The first class, as shown in the diagram, it involves the detection and recovery of hardware issues in today's AI chips. Uh, notably, when running machine learning workload in a large cluster, even if only one node has issues, the whole machine learning uh, workload can be impacted. And the second class is the need for additional uh, monitoring of AI chips uh, on top of the existing today's uh, Kubernetes regular monitoring. Uh, so here is today's agenda. Uh, for hardware detection, hardware error detection and recovery, we will introduce node problem detection and recovery and communication checks. For monitoring and insights, we will cover monitoring and use the promises Grafana and Amazon CloudWatch as the examples to introduce insights. In the following introduction, we will use AWS AI chips as our case study. There are several terminologies that we will reference later, and so we have listed them here to ensure everyone is familiar with them. First, AWS Infrastructure. AWS Infrastructure chips are designed by AWS to deliver high performance at lowest cost in Amazon EC2 for your deep learning and Gen AI inference applications. And next, AWS Trinium. AWS Trinium is the machine learning chip that AWS proposed built for deep learning training. And uh, AWS Neuron, it's the SDK used to run uh, deep learning workloads on Infrastructure and Chinium based instances. It supports customers in their end-to-end -end machine learning development uh, lifecycle to build new models. Chinium optimize these models and then deploy them in production. Next, uh, GitHub will take over to introduce the no problem detection and recovery. Thanks, Stephen. So I think the key point here is he referred to it that in the training job, the job as a whole makes progress only when all of the nodes are functional. So let's consider an example of a 600 node cluster and say one of the node is not functional for one minute, but that's gonna stall all the nodes. So it effectively translates to a 600 minute or 10 hours of stall effectively. The hardware can fail any time, but for this reason that the job needs all of the nodes to be functional, it's very important that we build the resiliency into the software layers uh, to detect hardware failures and remediate. That's why you need a problem detector, and it should be always on. Let's talk about some of the design goals for the problem detector. Because it's an entity that is always on, it cannot actually use the workload chips. It cannot use the AIML chips. It cannot interfere with the workload. It cannot have overwhelming CPU or memory requirements. Preferably, we want it to detect the error fast in few seconds. 
uh, we also wanted uh, to make the vi failure visible in appropriate way. For example, in Kubernetes environments, we wanted to reflect in the Kubernetes control plane so any watches watching the Kubernetes object can trigger. Optionally, the problem detection can also trigger a remediation action. As we started exploring solutions for this, an upstream component, which is already part of Kubernetes, emerged as a suitable candidate. Enter node problem detector. We will refer to this as NPD for the rest of the slides, but essentially we are gonna see a case study of using the upstream node problem detector to catch these errors. Let's go over some of the concepts of NPD. It has a problem API to report the problem. A problem can be a permanent problem which reflects in a node condition on the node object, and the implication is that this node is not suitable for workloads anymore. It also lets us report a temporary problem which is a recoverable error and it shows up as an event. Node problem detector itself runs as a daemon set on your cluster. Internally, it has a concept of sub-daemon which are different daemons designed to watch for different error signals. In our example today, we'll be leveraging the system log monitor functionality or sub-daemon of NPD. Specifically, we will leverage its functionality to watch k-message logs. The setup is pretty standard. It is running as a daemon set and it's configured or tuned using a config file. The config file will be mounted through a config map. This config map is defining the node condition, which is nothing but a set of regular expressions uh, which NPD should watch out for. That brings us to the sequence diagram. The first entity that becomes aware of the error is the neuron device driver or device driver for your AIML chip. It will then log a message to k-message. Because NPD is watching for these messages, it will publish that as a node condition because we defined it so as seen in the config map before to Kubernetes control plane. So we'll see an example. This will show up in your described node output and any watches on the node condition will trigger. Uh, additionally, in our case, we are also calling set instance health to indicate to ASG that this instance uh, is not healthy anymore. This is part of the daemon set YAML for NPD. Um, as you can see, we are running the upstream image as is, and we are configuring it with a config file. This is the config map we are gonna mount, uh, and we are using the system log monitor sub daemon that I talked about. Uh, hopefully this is not too hard to read, but this is the set of regular expressions that uh, correspond to our case study you can modify this to fit your need. And this is how you define the node condition. In our case, we have called it neuron health. We are only defining permanent conditions here, uh, four of them, and we are watching K message uh, with a look back of five minutes. This shows sample output of that node condition. When it triggers, it will basically add to the conditions array on the node object and the message corresponding to the failure will show up. The message should contain all the details necessary to identify the failure and uh, the operator can make meaningful sense out of it. Uh, this is showing the result of our custom action that I talked about where we are calling set instance health in addition to marking the node condition. We are telling ASG that this instance not healthy anymore and you see it getting set to unhealthy. In a managed Kubernetes environment, EKS in our case, this will trigger instance replacement in a graceful manner. It will drain the node and it will find new home for the pods. Um, it's important to note that along with this, along with getting rid of the node and the pod, um, it's important to restart the job from the last checkpoint. And for that, a higher level construct is necessary. We find MPI job to do that if you increase the back off, uh, to if you increase the retry limit on it. 
In terms of metrics, uh, NPD itself comes with a Prometheus target, so that can be scraped and it will integrate with any Prometheus and Grafana based monitoring system. On the screen here, you see the four metrics. They show up as a gauge, um, and the gauge turns to one when the condition is triggered. And in our environment, we are also publishing the metric to CloudWatch, and it's available there as well. So that's it for no problem detector. What we essentially saw is that we need a problem detector that's always on. And the upstream component called node problem detector is an excellent candidate to uh, utilize for this task. Uh, next, I want to talk about communications check. Unlike the NPD, which is always on, this is a check we prescribe before starting the training job. Simplistically, in a training job, some computation happens locally, and then all the workers sync up on the results. And that sync up operation, typically referred to as collective communications operation, utilizes high bandwidth networking, typically RDMA-based, EFA in case of AWS. So it's important to exercise those pathways and validate your networking configuration before starting your workload. Let's talk about how do you run this check. This will be done uh, by a tool that your AI chip vendor will provide. Uh, this test, note that it's applicable even on a single node, because the single node will typically have multiple cores, and those also uh, constitute collective communications. MPI job, again, is a suitable construct uh, to orchestrate this test. On the next two slides, I have just examples of how to run the test in case of uh, neuron. So we provide a tool called NCCOM test, uh, which can exercise the collective communications. In the first example, you see an all-reduce operation across two nodes, uh, and you see the success case where you get the expected bandwidth. Uh, we also show a couple examples where the configuration is not right and the test fails. This is exactly what we want to catch before we start the workload. And on my last slide here, uh, it's another example of NCCOM test. This time, it is exercising multiple buffer sizes ranging from 8 bytes to 1 GB, stepping in 2x. This information can be used to calibrate the uh, setup and validate it every time before you start the workload. And that's it from me on the problem detection and recovery. To recap, have a problem detector that's always on and validate, don't forget to validate your networking config before starting the job. And I'll hand it over back to Zeevan to talk about monitoring and insights. Okay, uh, now I will continue to introduce the solutions to the monitoring challenges with uh, AI chips as the second part of the session. First, uh, to monitor that, uh, we need a tool to gather the metrics uh, from the AI chips. Beyond the uh, regular system metrics, we need to monitor the additional metrics for AI chips. It includes the metadata, errors, latency, utilization. In particular, uh, AI chip utilization is an important uh, metric to monitor because over high utilization can cause application crashes which is common in today's large model uh, machine learning tasks. For example, uh, if the model requires more memory, than assigned AI chip devices can provide. It can lead to out of memory crashes. Conversely, uh, if the utilization is uh, too low, it indicates that the AI chip is not being used uh, efficiently. So we need to think how to optimize that. Uh, for example, to gather these metrics, uh, AWS Neuron provides uh, the neural monitor to obtain metrics uh, from AWS Inferential and AWS Chainium. Neural monitor collects the metrics and stats from the neural applications running on systems and streams uh, the collected data to SDL using the JSON format. The data includes the uh, regular system metrics, such as the vCPU usage, uh, neural device metadata, such as the device version, uh, errors, latencies, and utilization metrics. 
the utilization metrics uh, are reported uh, by multiple dimensions, such as uh, um, poor neural core utilization. We can see all of them in the uh, neural motors results. In Kubernetes, Prometheus is a popular open source um, metric database solution, and Grafana is a popular open source dashboard solution. Um, they are normally uh, used, used together for monitoring and insights, um, and uh, the AI chip metrics can be integrated uh, to these tools. For example, in Neuron, mm -hmm. we provide a containerized neural monitor that can be de deployed as a daemon site in Kubernetes. And we also provide the instructions uh, for seamless integration uh, with Promises and Grafana. So Promises can script the metrics uh, from the neural monitor daemon side and uh, send the metrics uh, and uh, display that in Grafana. Additionally, there's another approach. Um, it wraps the neural monitor container. Um, we have um, Amazon CloudWatch Observability EKS add-on. So that one package the neural monitor container, which offers a simpler approach. It can enable Amazon CloudWatch container insights for Neuron with a single command. Next, I will show two recorded demos, uh, one for Promises and Grafana integration, and the other for the Amazon CloudWatch integration. So let's start the first uh, recorded demo. Okay, now I already have a cluster created called uh, Test TRN1, and it has uh, four nodes. The two C1 nodes are just system nodes, but the two TRN1 nodes will be used for my demo. Uh, TRN1 is the name of the first generation of AWS Trinium chip. And here I also have, uh, I also created uh, an Amazon Managed Promises workspace and the Grafana dashboard is set up. If you look into its data source, we can find uh, it is pointed to the workspace of promises. And then we can go back to the terminal to validate the setup. <coughs> if you run a cool control get nodes, we can find the uh, four nodes we just uh, uh, find in the con console, and, uh, <coughs> and I also have deployed the neural monitor container as a daemon site in the cluster. We can find this here, and uh, when we describe that, okay. we can find it is using the neural monitor container image uh, released in the Amazon ECR public. Additionally, I also installed the Promises temp chart that is managed by community. I installed it in my cluster. So from this command, we can see, we can list the resources of a Promises temp chart. And here I use a value CMO to override uh, several configs. The first two, the service account and the server, they are just used to remote write to the Amazon Manager Promises workspace. Uh, the most important one is the third one is for Neural Monitor. We use the um, actual script configs. So that one is used to point, uh, um, point the metric to the Neural Monitor container, which is managed by the daemon side. So from this, the promises in my cluster can script the metrics uh, from the Neural Monitor daemon size and uh, write that to the Amazon Managed uh, uh, Promises workspace. And here we can see uh, I started a workload uh, um, be before the demo, and uh, in this workload, uh, I'm running a torch rank mine. It is, it is just running a simple chaining script, uh, which used the uh, AWS Neuron cores. It's all our custom AI chips. And let's go back to the Grafana dashboard. Because, the, because of the workload, we can see um, there's some neuron core utilization. We can zoom in to find uh, it's 3.8 uh, 
percent usage. And uh, there are also other uh, diagrams in the Grafana dashboard. For example, here we can see the neuron call utilization and uh, the neuron runtime used memory. Both of them have a spec uh, at the end caused by my, uh, my recent workload. Mm. Um, okay, so we can go to the next uh, demo. Okay, so this demo is about the Amazon Cloud Watch integration. It's uh, another approach to monitor. Here I have the same cluster with four nodes. Uh, the difference uh, is, uh, is here, add-on. Um, I also installed the Amazon CloudWatch Observability EKS add-on in my cluster. This add-on uh, packages the neural monitor container and uh, enables the CloudWatch container insights for neural. We can do some validation and uh, here from this command, a Kubernetes, uh, a Kube control get all with the uh, Amazon CloudWatch namespace. We can list all the resources in this add-on. We can find a neural monitor here. Um, it, has two, it has two replicas because it is uh, deployed in the two TR1 nodes. And similarly, I also run a sample workload before the demo. Now we can go back to the uh, CloudWatch Container Insights dashboard because it is uh, enabled by the add-on now. In the cluster level dashboard, we can see the recent uh, um, neural core utilization spec. There are, there are uh, multiple diagrams here, but we can find one to, yeah, so this is the Neuron core utilization, we can find there's some recent usage cost my cost by my workload. And uh, then other than that, in this container insights, we can also filter the metrics uh, by specific nodes. So for example, uh, we can find the node uh, the port is running from the terminal and choose the node I use to run the workload. There is a neural core utilization here. But if we switch to the other node, we can find the utilization is zero because I didn't run any workload there. And the users can also choose a series, um, filter metrics by, by specific services or workloads, pods or containers. So with these metrics, uh, it's, it is easy for them to correlate uh, their uh, device usage with these elements. Okay, so that's it for the second demo. And, um, and, this, and the steps uh, to reproduce uh, the demos above are captured in this poster. It's uh, called a Scale and a Simplify Machine Learning Workload Monitoring and on Amazon EKS with the uh, AWS Neural Monitor Container. And we recently posted that. Uh, feel free to check out if you want to reproduce by yourself. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. So in this session, we introduced uh, the importance of observability of um, running AI workload in Kubernetes and the mechanisms uh, for hardware error detection and recovery and the last section is the mechanisms, mechanisms for monitoring and insights.